I really don't know what to believe anymore. A recent Harvard study showed that red meat consumption increases your risk of type 2 diabetes, but hold on a second. Another recent Harvard study showed that people on a carnivore diet improved their diabetes and some even stopped taking their medications? Scientific debate is a good thing, and conversation is also a good thing, but press coverage and scientific studies in terms of nutrition are confusing as heck. Stay until the end of this video to hear the weirdest part about the story. So when I first saw headlines a couple months ago linking red meat with diabetes, I sort of just shrugged it off. But then I realized I should probably look into it more and in the process found out that as consumers and normal people, it's really, really hard to figure out what might be slowly making us ill or what might be helping us to fight off illness. A lot of you have probably already heard about the Harvard study linking red meat to type 2 diabetes, but here it is in a nutshell. The study looked at 216,695 participants that were 81% female and 90% Caucasian. Their red meat intake was assessed via food frequency questionnaires that were given every two to four years. And in this video, we'll refer to the study as the 2023 red meat diabetes study. On the other hand, the Harvard carnivore diet study looked at just 2,029 people on a diet of at least 85% meat and used a social media survey to assess their quality of life after living on the extremely restricted diet. We'll call this study the 2021 carnivore study. The 2023 red meat diabetes study found an increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes in the participants that ate more than one serving of meat per day, while the 2021 study found that almost all participants who reported having diabetes and were taking medication for diabetes reported benefits that included the reduction of medication use. And as you can probably tell by the summaries, both studies aren't exactly the most solid. There is a difference though. And honestly, from an untrained, normal person perspective, it sounds borderline anecdotal for both studies, and the evidence isn't entirely convincing. The 2023 Red Meat Diabetes Study used something called a food frequency questionnaire that was given to participants every two to four years. So if you were in this study, you'd be expected to remember something like how many hot dogs do you consume per month or how many cups of ground beef do you eat per day? Critics of the food frequency questionnaire often point out how unreliable it is because participants are at best basically guessing how frequently they're eating foods, or at worst, lying on the survey to sound more healthy than they actually are. Or they might just select a more healthy answer because they believe that they're eating healthier. But honestly, I can't even remember what I had for dinner two days ago, so answering a food frequency questionnaire every two to four years sounds nuts. The 2021 carnivore study wasn't really any better than a food frequency questionnaire and asked participants about things like motivation, dietary intake patterns, symptoms that might suggest nutrient deficiencies or other adverse effects, satisfaction, prior and current health conditions, anthropometrics, which are basically just various measurements of their bodies, and laboratory data. So back to the 2023 red meat diabetes study, critics of the study say that the authors didn't control for enough variables. For one thing, foods like meat sandwiches, burgers, casseroles, lasagna, and even frozen dinners were counted as meat, which means that people eating some or all of the above were lumped together with participants that might have been eating only homemade meat dishes. Considering when somebody eats a burger, they often will have fries or soda with it, it's not exactly the same as someone who might be, I don't know, on a keto diet and is eating a homemade steak with a salad every night for dinner. Critics also point out that, for some reason, the authors of the study did not control for BMI, which is body mass index, of the participants. Critics say that the BMI of the participants wasn't adjusted for and that the authors themselves said that half the risk of diabetes is explained by excess body fat. In the study, the group that ate more red meat also had a higher body weight, exercised less, and smoked more than the groups that ate less red meat. This is something called healthy user bias, which basically means that in this data set, the people who ate more red meat were more likely to do unhealthy things like drinking sugar-laden soda or smoking cigarettes, while the people who ate less red meat were more likely to do healthier things like exercising and choosing not to drink sodas or smoke. Now, the 2021 carnivore study isn't without its flaws, but if you read the discussion part of the study, the authors are well aware of this and list the weaknesses, what needs to be improved, and they say that further studies need to be done. The study is one of the first of its kind and acknowledges that it's a stepping stone towards further investigation. On the other hand, for the 2023 red meat diabetes study, you'll need to scroll all the way down to find this sentence at the end of the study. 
Finally, we cannot exclude the possibility of residual confounding due to the observational nature of this study. Basically, even with so much explanation and data collecting via food frequency questionnaires, the evidence is fundamentally observational and can't determine whether red meat actually causes type 2 diabetes. So which is it? Is red meat associated with a higher risk of diabetes, or can an all-meat diet actually help with diabetes? Luckily, in 2022, there was a meta-analysis of 21 randomized controlled trials published in Nature that tried to answer one of these questions. Randomized controlled trials provide more reliable data than epidemiological or observational studies, and a meta-analysis looks at the results from several different randomized controlled trials. This study found that red meat consumption had no statistical impact on diabetes risk. While results from observational studies have suggested an association of red meat intake with type 2 diabetes incidence, the results of this meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials did not show an effect of red meat on glycemic and insulinemic biomarkers associated with the development of type 2 diabetes. This study didn't look at a carnivore diet, but it did try to see if there's any increased risk of diabetes associated with higher red meat consumption based on data from randomized controlled trials. Overall, out of all three of these studies, there's only one that got a substantial amount of press coverage. Can you guess which study it was? It's the 2023 study associating red meat consumption with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. The weirdest part about the study, though, is the top articles that come up after a quick Google search don't seem to mention anything about food frequency questionnaires, surveys, or any similar terms. So what's up with that? Let us know why you think the articles left out this information in the comments below. The key takeaway from this is that we need to get information from several sources to find out what might be helping us or what might be harming us. I say this a lot, but with anything like health, it's okay to not take a this side or that side stance and to be somewhere in the middle. Too often, we're trying to be persuaded to eat a certain way or that there's one diet to rule them all. Personally, I think that we have to feel it out for ourselves and do what makes us feel good. Ah, and another thing, we should do everything to avoid excess exposure to environmental toxins, whether it means changing our diet or using products that don't contain questionable compounds. But what do you think about all this? Have you seen these studies before? Has including red meat in your diet helped you at all, or has it caused harm? Let us know in the comments below. And if you learned something from this, please like and subscribe, share it with a friend who might find it interesting. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.